From Bunchlung Country, this is Sunday Mass with Bishop Greg Homing. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. We are now in the season of Lent, which is preparation for the passion, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We begin Mass trying to grow closer to God and preparing ourselves as people to meet God. Let's begin by acknowledging where we fail and where God is not part of our lives. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You are Son of God and Son of Mary, Christ of mercy. Christ have mercy. You are Word made flesh and splendour of the Father, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, through the yearly observance of Holy Lent, that we may grow in understanding of the riches hidden in Christ and by worthy conduct pursue their effects. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord God fashioned man of dust from the soil then he breathed into his nostrils a breath of life, and thus man became a living being. The Lord God planted a garden in Eden, which is in the east, and there he put the man he had fashioned. The Lord God caused to spring up from the soil every kind of tree, enticing to look at and good to eat. With the tree of life, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil in the middle of the garden. The serpent was the most subtle of all the wild beasts that the Lord God had made. It asked the woman, did God really say you were not to eat from any of the trees in the garden? The woman answered the serpent, we may eat the fruit of the trees in the garden but of the fruit of the tree in the middle of the garden, God said, you must not eat it, nor touch it, under pain of death. Then the serpent said to the woman, no, you will not die. God knows in fact that on the day you eat it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God's, knowing good and evil. The woman saw that the tree was good to eat and pleasing to the eye and that it was desirable for the knowledge that it would give. So she took some of the fruit and ate it. She gave some also to her husband who was with her and he ate it. She, then the eyes of both of them were opened and they realised that they were naked so they sewed fig leaves together to make themselves loincloths. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. 
Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Have mercy on me, God, in your kindness. In your compassion, blot out my offence. O wash me more and more from my guilt and cleanse me from my sin. Be Be merciful, merciful, O Lord, Lord, for for we have have sinned. sinned. My offences truly, I know them. My sin is always before me. Against you, you alone, have I sinned. What is evil in your sight, I have done. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. A pure heart create for me, O God. Put a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, nor deprive me of your Holy Spirit. Be Be merciful, merciful, O Lord, Lord, for we have sinned. Give me again the joy of your help. With a spirit of fervour, sustain me. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Be Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Sin entered the world through one man, and through sin, death. And thus death has spread through the whole human race, because everyone has sinned. If it is certain that death reigned over everyone as a consequence of one man's fall, it is even more certain that one man, Jesus Christ, will cause everyone to reign in life who receives the free gift that he does not deserve of being made righteous. Again, as one man's fall brought condemnation on everyone, so the good act of one man brings everyone's life and makes them justified. As by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by one man's obedience many will be made righteous. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. No one lives on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Praise Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. He fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, after which he was very hungry. And the tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to turn into loaves. As he replied, Scripture says, Man does not live on bread alone but on the very word that comes from the mouth of God. The devil then took him to the holy city and made him stand on the parapet of the temple. If you are the son of God, he said, throw yourself down, for scripture says, he will put you in the angel's charge and they will support you on their hands in case you hurt your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, Scripture also says, you must not put the Lord your God to the test. Next, taking him to a very high mountain, the devil showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. I'll give you all these, he said, if you fall at my feet and worship me. Then Jesus replied, Be off, Satan, for Scripture says, You must worship the Lord your God and serve him alone. Then the devil left him, and angels appeared and looked after him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. (laughs) 
I have memories of friends of my parents, not relatives, but they were friends that I never let, nevertheless called auntie and uncle. And they were a lovely couple until they fell out of sorts. And when that happened, they would say things to each other which would suddenly annoy the other. He could annoy her in a way that nobody else could and she could annoy him in a way that nobody else could. And when that happened, we'd all stand back and watch with slight embarrassment. And then the next time you saw them, they were so close and loving. But every now and then this would happen. And obviously what was happening was they got annoyed with each other and they knew each other so well, they knew how to doubly annoy each other. They knew the way each of them had to get into that person, the husband or the wife which I suppose is a sad reality, but I tend to think it's not uncommon in marriages that this happens because you can't be with someone for so long without beginning to recognise the weaknesses of the partner, without beginning to recognise the sore points of the partner, without beginning to recognise how you can really annoy them. I think this happens in marriage more than any other place because of, of the reality of closeness and the number of years together. In today's gospel, we are in many ways troubled by the fact that Jesus is tempted three times. I think it's very important in relation to how I began. These friends would know how to tempt each other because they knew the weaknesses. And knowing the weakness, they could lunge for that weakness. Today's gospel kind of disturbs us because implicitly it says that Jesus Christ has weaknesses. And according to the gospel, at least three. And this is not play acting. This is a real truth about Jesus Christ. And I would recommend to anyone that you need to look at these temptations and work out what Jesus' weaknesses are. Because these weaknesses make him human, as these friends of my parents were very human, because that's the way human life is. I'll take you through the first alone, because it's only a homily. We don't have time to do more. And then from there go to see what this implies for each of us. These temptations tap into three real weaknesses, three real struggles that Jesus carries throughout the gospel. And if you don't know what they are, you'll never understand him. If you don't know what someone's weaknesses are, you'll never know who that person is, truly. The first is, at the end of 40 days, without food, he was hungry. And the devil comes and says, do you see these stones? Turn them into bread. Which is a quite a strange temptation that Jesus would risk his own immortal soul on having some bread to eat now, given that he's now emerged from the desert and bread's probably just at the other end of the street. So why? What temptation is this? I don't believe it's a temptation for food that would turn it into a very simple and silly weakness. But it's something more profound which touches into what we recognise about Jesus for the rest of the Gospel. What does bread mean? What does bread mean for a Jew at the time? It's the smell of bread it's the bread which is on the table of your house. It's the bread that you've seen your mother need, as we have in the Gospels, putting yeast with flour to make bread. It's what he remembers from home. It's a smell of home. It's a security of home. It's a love that you have at home. This is what the bread means. And as Jesus emerges from the desert, he knows that he can't go home. He won't go home again. He'll visit Nazareth one time, as we see it in the Gospel. 
And thereafter, he spends his time caring for the people, preaching the gospel, and eventually going to Jerusalem where he will be crucified and where he will die. The first thing he knows he has to give up in order to do the Father's will is everything that he loves, everything that's made him who he is, the bread of his life, his family. I'll leave it to you to work out what the other two temptations are. But until we know the temptations and the weaknesses, the struggles Jesus has, Jesus does not become a real person and we will never understand him. That said, what's the significance of these temptations and our Lord's weaknesses for each of us? By facing his weakness and walking in it, this opens in his life the place of God. And where Jesus has temptations, where Jesus is weak and fragile, this is the place where his heavenly Father enters his life. And it's no different for you, no different for me. I have weaknesses. And the extraordinary thing about my weaknesses, if I live my weaknesses in the presence of God, they become the windows through which God enters my life. God doesn't come to me in my strength. There's nothing in the gospel about Jesus' strength. It begins with his weakness. And my life with God begins with my weakness because my weakness is a place where I am open to God. My weakness is the place in my life where I can do nothing where I need God. My weakness is the place of my prayer because it is in that place that I cry out to God. And as we begin Lent, let's all turn to God in our weakness and cry out in such a way that our weaknesses and our temptations become the ways and the places through which God enters our lives. And let's stand and profess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We are joined to Jesus Christ through our weaknesses and fragility. In this, let us bring our prayers to God our Father. That all of God's people may be strong in resisting temptations, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May the people of New Zealand, traumatised by cyclone and floods, along with the people of Turkey and Syria, devastated by the recent earthquakes, receive the support which they so urgently need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in our own community, who one year on are still suffering the effects of the floods. May we continue to look out for and assist those who are in need, getting them the support they require. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we will know the mercy of God as we confess our sins. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that all who are sick and bereaved may receive healing and acceptance through Christ and the intercession of St. Mary of the Cross. 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the dead may be cleansed from all their sins. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we make these and all our prayers through Christ our Lord. brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of his hands, the praise of the Lord in his name, the of the Lord is Give us the right disposition, O Lord, we pray, to make these offerings, for with, for with them we celebrate the beginning of this venerable and sacred time, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Up your Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts that freed from disordered affections they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints we praise you, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord God, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, the Son and the Christ. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. 
giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring it to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles, Saint Teresa, Saint John of the Cross, and, <clears throat> and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, <coughs> thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. <coughs> And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit, let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God. Let us take away the sins of the world and have mercy on us. Lamb of God, let us take away the sins of the world and have mercy on us. Lamb of God, let us take away the sins of the world and have mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the Supper of the Lamb. Lord,
and let us pray. O Lord, may the bountiful blessing we pray come down upon your people, that hope may grow in tribulation, virtue by strengthening in temptation, and eternal, de- and eternal redemption be assured through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And my mighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. My name is Lasmi. I am 16 years old. I live in Jazirkot, Nepal. तरकारी बेचेर केही पैसा त्यहाँबाट आउँछ अनि मैले पर्न नपाए पनि अनि बाल बच्चेलाई सुख होस् अनि केही परिवर्तन गर्न पर्न लेख्न सुखी भएर खान भनेर धेरै मेहनत गरेर चाहिँ हामीलाई पढ्ने खर्च जुटाएर पढाउ पढाइराख्नु भएको छ Lakshmi lives in one of the poorest districts in Nepal. After the death of her father, she was devastated and stopped attending school. Parna pauna la abara na pae ta aba dukha garne ani estai jasto mummy haru dukha garnu bhayo chha ni. Lakshmi was encouraged to return to school by her mother and friends at Child's Club. Ma bal club ma na basta. Ah, tyo bal club ma jasto ma na jadai, abadha na hudai. Ma chai ekdamai la jaune, na bolne, na bolne jasto school ma gaera pani. These clubs provide extracurricular activities to develop speaking, leadership and education in child rights. पहिला सानी सानो डराउँथे बोल्न सक्दैन थिए सानी थिए अब अहिले अब बाल कलममा लागेर पढेर जान्ने पनि भएकी छ हामीले के कुरा सिकाउने पनि भएकी छ अनि पढ्न पनि सक्छे मलाई त एचएल कलममा बसिरहेको थिए धेरै परिवर्तन आयो लक्ष्मीज प्राउडस मोमेन्ट was advocating for water taps at her school so students can access clean water ama pachi samay yahan aunda heri bani ama padna bahir gaye pani ab pachadi ab ma job tira lage pani pachi yahan aunda heri ta school janda heri maile dhara dekhchu ani te dekhera chai ekdam khushi ko mahsus pahila ko samjhera khushi ko mahsus huncha
Lakshmi graduated from high school and is now at Technical College. अब मैं ले सिविल इंजीनियरिंग पढ़ता हूँ ये आप ले पढ़े रा पढ़ी शक्के हैं पर ये आमलाई चाहिए रामलो सांगा दुखगर नगराई का ना बसाल ने जस्तो महसूस सॉरी भोली ऐसे इंजीनियर में नेरा नाम रा रोड हरो नाम रा पुल हरो बाद हरो बना आगे देखने परोस में ले काम रो काम कर दे दे को देखने परोस बर ना मार्ट चल कल में ना बस्ते को बैठा था ही उधर इंजीनियर उन्हें अब मैं इले बस्ते रह पाया बस्ता में आए 